So today we've got a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter from Ampeak. So I've already had a 1200 watt inverter from Ampeak and it's nice and compact but the only complaint I'd really have about it is I didn't quite like the amount of noise that these fans make and I actually had since modified these fans to, to run slower and be more quiet. However, when they asked me if I wanted to try their, their new 2000 watt inverter, they said they did upgrade the fans on these to be silent. And they also said this unit has the silent fans as well. All right, so let's open it up. All right, we got our instruction manual. So let's get a full load efficiency of greater than 90%. Continuous power output is 2000 watts. Overload is 2200 watts. And the surge is 4000 watts comes with some cables. Let's take a look and see what these guys are. Oh, okay, it's got a 200C rating on it. Uh, this feels like kind of a silicone type uh, wire, which is a nice upgrade from what I'm used to seeing inverters come with. Uh, it's a 20 millimeter square, which according to this table looks like it would give us around a four gauge size. We'll test with these cables. I honestly would probably want a larger gauge uh, than four, but we'll test with them to see how well they do. Uh, definitely looks to be a copper conductor. I can see the copper wires inside. And here's the inverter itself. It's got some nice covers over the terminals. Not sure how that comes off. Oh, I see. You have to unscrew this little nut right here and then it slides off. So I'd say it's a pretty compact unit for a 2000 watt inverter. I've got a 1500 watt inverter that's much larger than this actually. We've got three 120 volt uh, receptacles. We got one cigarette uh, lighter style jack. We've got two USB uh, looks like 3.1 amp per spot and then this is for a remote which we don't have all right well let's hook it up and try it out and to power this inverter we're going to use two of these mini batteries from redodo these are 100 amp hour 12 volt batteries so we're going to put them in parallel and the reason why we want to use two of them one of them is not going to be powerful enough to run this inverter at its full 2000 watts and before we place these in parallel we're going to charge both batteries up to full individually. And the reason that you want to do that is because they could be different voltage levels and different states of charge. So you want to top each one up so that they're on the same state of charge and same voltage. I think a lot of the times people that have problems hooking up multiple batteries, they skip this step. They don't charge them up and they just put them in either series or in parallel and then they end up with problem. So make sure you top these batteries up before you place them in either parallel or in series. Okay, so the batteries are both topped off now. They're fully charged. It's gonna be completely safe to put them in parallel. And to put them in parallel, I'm just building these number two gauge Jumper cables, I use these welding cable. It, uh, it's a very robust wire to use. And I'm using these hydraulic cramps, which are super affordable. I'll put the link in the description for you guys. They have all the different dies that you can use to uh, crimp different sizes. This one was less than $40. But, uh, yeah, all you do is just stick, you know, well actually kind of pump it up a little bit and then get your wire in there. There we go, now it's holding. And crank it down. I usually get some leverage on a table. Ah, that's it. Then release it. And that makes a very solid crimp. And before we put that last one on, it might be wise just to check the voltages between these two batteries to make sure they're not largely off from one another. So we got 13.4 uh, there and 13.345 uh, there. And that's pretty close. So there shouldn't be any massive uh, current transfer. 
Yeah, we got no sparks. So that's good. And that's uh, how easy it is just to link those two in parallel. And then uh, we'll go ahead and use the wires that they sent us because I want to test them and see how well they'll, they hold up. Um, but you can easily see the size difference between the number two that I'm using and this one, which would be more of a number four. All right, and before you make the final connection to your inverter, you need to pre-charge the capacitors in the inverter by using a resistor. I think I've got like uh, an 820 ohm here. You could, you could use a, a much less, maybe a couple hundred ohm resistor. This will just limit the amount of current that goes through. If you don't do this step and you just connect it directly, it'll make a big giant spark. So we're going to pre-charge it. Okay, that should be long enough. Let's see if we get a spark. Oh, a little bit of one, but that wasn't as big as it could be. I really need a smaller resistor so it'll charge up a little bit faster. Okay, there we go. Everything's tight. Now we can turn the inverter on. And there it is. Showing that we have 13.2 volts input and the output is 120 volts. All right, guys, let's put some loads on this thing and see what it'll do. But first, before we do that, I forgot to mention, have you noticed that I installed the cables this way diagonally? And the reason why I did that rather than putting them both on one battery is because if you put them both on one battery, and even though they're in parallel, you're still going to be putting more load on this battery and less load on this battery. So this one actually will do more work and discharge lower than what this battery would. If you put them across like this, that shares the load evenly across the two batteries. Okay, let's get to loading this guy down. Let's first try this heater that I use all the time for a load. And we'll start it off on its lowest setting. And it's, it's very quiet, so we'll get a chance to hear the fans and see what that's like. Let's turn the inverter back on. Okay, now it's showing that we're pulling 770 watts. And I don't hear any fans on yet. So let's uh, turn it on to the medium setting. All right, now we got 1133 watts. No fans on yet. That's uh, that's good. I like that. Uh, I, I would expect the fans to probably pop on here a little bit as it heats up. It's showing 96 Fahrenheit as the temperature on the unit. So let's go ahead and put this heater on the max setting. And now we're pulling almost 1500 watts. Still no fan on yet. See, while that's going, I want to check these cables. Okay, now the fan's on. That's not terrible. I think it's a little louder than my lease key inverter that I use a lot. My 1500 watt lease key inverter. So let's check these cables. I can feel them getting a little bit warm, but it's not uncomfortable warm. And these are, they feel pretty cool, the bigger wires. So let's, uh, let's do some more scientific testing on that and uh, check the temperature. <laughs> Looks like I've got 93 on the wire. And if we check the wire, this wire, let me see, we've got 87. It's a little bit cooler on the larger wires. It's like we got about 98 now. So this insulation is rated at 300 C so it can go a lot higher than that actually so I put the heater back down to its lowest setting we're pulling 764 761 
And I'm going to go ahead and plug in this leaf blower. Now this thing, I think it does about 1200 watts. I've got the heater turned off now. So we're not pulling anything. And then we'll go ahead and do the leaf blower. Yeah, so it looked like it was about 1250 watts. So let's turn the heater back on. We're doing 758. And then let's turn the, the leaf blower on. Looks like we're pretty much pushing it to about that 2,000 watts. So I'm gonna let it run actually for a bit like that. And I'll leave the camera right there so we can see. So far so good. You can see that that wire was getting up on oh, what was it, 118 or something. And then uh, these wires up here are still at like 96. It's a little a little warm, but definitely not too terrible for these stock cables. All right, I see. Let's try to push it even harder. So we're gonna do eleven. We're gonna do eleven twenty nine here on the heater, and then we'll turn on the leaf blower. As you can see, we went well over the 2,000 watt limit. We were like 2,200 and something. I will say that I think these fans did ramp up even higher. It's a little louder than what I what I care for, you know. Um, I'd prefer that to be more quiet because I've got I've got inverters that are quieter. But beyond that, I again I think that's my only complaint with Ampeak because it seems like a quality unit it definitely is handling the loads but I feel like that fan uh, noise is a little louder than uh, than what I would like so all the loads are off it's it's on zero watts the fans are still cranking uh, clearly because it's still a little warm the internal temperature is 105 still uh, so it's gonna have to go down uh, I don't know I guess oh there we go now it stopped. Oh, that's so much more quiet. So right now what I want to do now is I want to check the idle consumption. We don't have any loads running. The uh, inverter is on. So let's see how much power it uses. Just sitting there doing nothing. Let's zero that out. And it's uh, using 1.367 amps at idle. Check that again. 1.37. So, 1.37. Let's check the voltage here. Times 13.28. So the idle consumption is 18.1. 19 watts that's pretty pretty well in line i guess with an inverter of this size all right guys i think that's going to be it for the video i don't know what else to test i think we pretty much covered uh most of everything i would like to uh, thank ampeak for sending us this inverter for review 
And I'd also like to thank Rododo for sending us these awesome mini batteries. I'll catch you guys on the next one.